Hey guys, welcome back to Taylor Tech. And as you can see by the mess on my desk here, today we're going to be talking about cables and connectors. Um, there's a lot of confusion uh, sometimes about what the appropriate cable or connector is uh, to use for uh, a specific application. And there's even some misunderstanding about what things are actually named. I want to clear as much of that up as possible today. So uh, we're going to go through this uh, as quickly as I can. The first thing we're going to talk about is some basics about cables. So there are some kind of underlying concepts that work across all cables, both analog and digital, and all the different types of connectors here. So the first is the difference between male and female on a cable. Um, and we'll use XLR as our example on that. Now, this is going to seem slightly juvenile because whoever came up with this naming was slightly juvenile. Male is anything where the metal connect the actual connectors are sticking out and female is anything that the metal connectors go into so you can see on the xlr this is the male end this is the female end um, and almost every other connector on here every other cable on here has male connectors on it and most uh, inserts or jacks on devices are female so that's male and female now plug in jack Quite simply, plug is the ending of a cable, um, sometimes called connector, although connector is usually used to refer to the format. So plug, jack is what a plug goes into. So jacks are on devices, plugs are on cables. Um, finally, balanced and unbalanced. Now this one's a little more complicated. Um, often when you run a signal over a long distance, uh, you can get RF interference, uh, especially if it's an analog signal and it's uh, running over a metal cable of some sort. Uh, to combat this, what uh, they've done over the years is they've used what's called a balanced connection. Now, quite simply what that is, and XLR is a balanced cable type, um, is instead of just running a hot signal and a ground, they run a signal, a cold, which has no signal going over it, and a ground. Now, the reason for the cold is that it, whenever the RF interference that is going to happen is picked up by the cable it all that is on that cold line is the interference the hot line now has interference and signal on it and the ground is of course ground what you can do then on the receiving end of that of that balance signal is you can subtract the interference from the signal and interference and end up with just a signal so if anyone ever tries to tell you that uh, a balanced cable is going to be a better audio quality they're not exactly wrong, but they're not thinking it all the way through. It's not that it's a better audio quality so much as it is a better, um, it has better tolerances for RF interference. So, you know, if you're running a cable over a long distance, it makes a big difference and you really want to go with balanced. But if you're going over a short distance, like, you know, back of a computer or something like that, it doesn't matter at all. Okay, next we're going to go through the different types of cables. I've got, I think, everything laid out here that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one is RCA, good old RCA. Now this is a uh, format that's been around for like half a century now. And uh, it is a coaxial cable. So there's a, here I'll actually show you here. There we go. So there is a single copper core and a copper sheath around it. Um, and what that does is the, the sheath running around it will be the ground and the core will be the signal. That helps shield it a little bit. It's not as good as balanced, but it's better than nothing. Um, so, you know, RCA, that's why RCA became so popular so, uh, so long ago is because it was almost as good as balanced for home use. You could still have a 20-foot cable and it made sense, um, but you didn't have to, you know, have that third line running through the cable. Uh, RCA connectors, that's what they look like right there. That's the male end. Uh, the next cable we're going to talk about is XLR. XLR, often sometimes referred to as a mic cable. Um, it is a balanced cable, uh, and it is also directional. So uh, one thing most people don't think about is all of the other cable types that we have up here are non-directional. They're male at both ends of the cable. XLR is not that way. It's female at one end and male at the other. So what that means is anything that sends a signal is male. Anything that receives a signal is female. So that makes it really easy when you're running uh, an XLR cable to know which end needs to be where. The male end goes to the receiving end and the female end goes to the sending end. So, you know, just like, yeah, well, we won't go there. <coughs> the next one is the one that is probably the most frustrating to deal with because 
people do so much with it because it's so ubiquitous. The phone connector, and you probably don't know it by that name because nobody knows it by that name. This connector type here, in its many different iterations, is called a phone connector. All right, so this comes in quarter inch, eighth inch, and 2.5 millimeter varieties. You can see that is actually just a tiny bit smaller. Um, you'll also note that some of these have more contacts than others. So you've got here a two contact and here are three contacts. This is referred to as tip and sleeve and tip ring and sleeve. So TS, TRS. Uh, that's a, uh, the, those are the most common type you'll see in phono connectors, although you will see what is referred to as TRRS, tip ring ring sleeve, um, in uh, some headsets, especially headsets that come with cell phones, like these iPod earbuds or iPhone earbuds. You know, a lot of times some of the other names you'll hear for these are, you know, jack plug, which makes no sense, or stereo plug, or, um, you know, a headset connector, something like that. And the, uh, nine times out of 10, they are used to carry a stereo signal, a, you know, a left and right audio channel, but they are used for a lot more than that. Like this one connector here actually carries a mono audio and a video signal. Um, it's for my kid's little camera that he has. But, uh, and on the TRRS, a lot of times it'll be used to carry left and right channels as well as a microphone channel or a control channel uh, so that you can have volume controls and things like that on a uh, set of earbuds. So that's the phono connector. It is, it can be the most confusing. Um, you know, it's, it's most of the time when you see phono, it's actually gonna be unbalanced, although it is possible to have a balanced phono connector. So um, when you see, just tip and sleeve, that's going to be unbalanced because you only have that one hot signal and then a ground. When you see tip, ring, and sleeve, uh, it's, and you're carrying, you can actually have a balanced signal. This cable is not balanced, actually, but um, just as an example, you could have a hot, cold, and then ground. Um, so it is possible to have balanced phono cables. Uh, Quarter-inch TRS is uh, common in professional gear. Uh, for carrying a balanced signal. All right, next we're going to talk about digital cable types. So there's basically two digital cable types that you're going to encounter at any given time. The first is coaxial. Um, so coaxial digital is basically just RCA. And actually we can take the end off of this cable and you can see that it is more or less the same. It's just a little bit beefier in terms of the insulation that they've got on that uh, on that center um, center copper, um, and the sleeve is a little bit beefier. Everything overall is a little beefier, and that's to just give it a little bit better RF uh, stability. So, but you can actually, in most cases, interchangeably use coax digital and RCA. You won't get good quality if you're using RCA for coax digital. You might not get a good signal lock, but um, you'll have no problems if you try and use a coax digital cable for an RCA application. Next, we have the Toslink, or optical. So this is what the optical cable on the back of your PC looks like. Um, this is obviously a male cable, um, and that's, you know, the optical will always be male. So these optical cables come in basically two varieties. One is a plastic core, and the other is an actual glass core. Um, the plastic core ones are usually shorter, and they're going to be less flexible than the glass core ones. The, um, Glass core ones are what actual fiber optic cable that carries your internet, um, you know, that your ISP is using. That's, they're actually using the glass core cable. It's a lot, uh, a lot less signal degradation and a lot more flexible, less likely to uh, break, you know. So if you do have shorter consumer grade ones, you want to be very careful. You don't want to, you know, knot them or get them too tight. You can actually damage the cable and it will no longer carry a signal. So in terms of the difference between coax digital and optical digital, it doesn't really make that big of a difference for the vast majority of applications. Um, coax digital is more flexible. You're less likely to damage it by kinking it around a corner, but you're more likely to get RF interference over long runs. Optical can run much further than coax uh, can, but it's more prone to kinking um, and you know more prone to damage to the cable. Otherwise, the signal is the exact same. Okay, the last thing we're gonna talk about is converters. This is where things get really confusing because 
people sometimes do things with converters that, frankly, they shouldn't. The first thing to consider is that converters can actually be multiple types of converter at once. It can convert the, you know, from one format to another format, and uh, it can also split the signal, and it, or it you know, could break out the signal. So just bear that in mind as you're looking at converters. Make sure you really understand what it is that you're getting with a converter, because two cables may look the same, but have completely different functions. Just because it fits doesn't mean it sits. If it plugs in, it's not necessarily going to work. Pinouts on these cables don't always work the way you think they would. The last thing we're going to do is talk about connectors, the different cable converter types. Uh, the first is a basic converter. So here we've got quarter inch TS to eighth inch TS. Real basic conversion, just making it smaller. Next we have splitters. So this is a splitter. What a splitter does is it takes a single plug and it mirrors what's going on, same exact same pinout on two on two out or more outputs. So you know a device like this you could use to plug into uh, say like uh, you know an iPod or something, and then two sets of two headsets into that uh, iPod. So splitter mirrors. Next we have a breakout. So this is an example of a breakout. It's got eighth inch TRS to two mono RCAs. Um, so, you know, a breakout is going to take two channels um, that are on one plug and break it out into two individual plugs with one channel each. An interconnect, which I thought that's what this was, but it looks like they're grounding it. Uh, generally, what an interconnect is going to do is it's going to take um, a plug that has it's going to take a single plug that has two channels on it and a plug that would normally have two channels on it and bridge those two channels together so that they're mirroring each other. Um, you know, you'll see this often, not so much on this crap, but on um, a, like a quarter inch TRS to uh, eighth inch TRS, or I'm sorry, quarter inch TS to eighth inch TRS. So, you know, um, if you have a mono output that you're wanting to mirror across a stereo device or a stereo output that you're wanting to condense down to a single mono channel, um, you would use an interconnect to do that. And finally, we have extenders, the humble extender. So all an extender is, is for you know, all of these cables here that are male on both ends. Um, it is a male and female cable that allows you to make that cable longer. All right, guys, I hope this video has been helpful and you've enjoyed the uh, pile of spaghetti that I've made out of my desk. It's gonna take me forever to replug all this shit back together. Um, but if you did find it helpful, throw a like on the video. Also leave a comment below and let me know what you think about it. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. Um, also, there's uh, links below in the description to places you can find me on the internet, uh, both my, my Twitter, my uh, gaming community's website, No Quarter, and uh, Reddit, where I'm uh, pretty active. So thanks, guys. Thanks. For, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you on the next one.